Well, hey, everybody, welcome to part five in our devotional series, Get Up. The day is cold outside, but our hearts are warm, warmed by the word of God. We have been encouraging, I've been encouraging you over these last five days to get up, get up, get up in faith, get up in strength. It requires simple obedience. It requires going where he sends us. And the third and the, and the last thing I want to encourage you with is this, is to remind yourself, let's remind ourselves that we stand on the shoulders of giants. That even though at times in this season, getting up and embracing something new can feel daunting, feel scary. Let's remember that we're not alone. People have gone before. In fact, Hebrews 11 says we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. What does that mean? It's really talking about people who've died in faith, who've gone before us, who are now in the arena of heaven, in a sense, championing, championing us on, cheering us on as we step into new opportunities and new days. We stand on the shoulders of giants. I mean, you probably know this, that it actually says that around the outside of the two pound coin, standing on the shoulders of giant, giants. One of the reasons why I believe that remembering that we stand on the shoulders of giants is so encouraging is because we can really think that if they could do it, then we can do it too. If people before us can embrace new opportunities, then we can embrace new opportunities as well. The story is told about a traveler in the early days of, of the West, the Wild West. He came to Mississippi, Mississippi, where he found no bridge. Unfortunately, it was winter and the river was covered with ice, but the traveler was afraid to trust it, not knowing how thick the ice was. Finally, with real great caution, he crept on his hands and knees and managed to get halfway over the frozen river. And then he heard... Yep, he heard singing from behind him. And cautiously, he turned around, and there out of the dusk came another traveler driving a four-horse load of coal over the ice, singing as he went. There was a sense where the guy coming with the coal, he knew what to expect. And it gave that lone traveler the confidence to get up and to walk, to get up <coughs> and to walk. He was following in the footpath of someone else. Let me read it to you. Hebrews chapter 12. I said before Hebrews 11, it's Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, this year, let's throw off everything that hinders, the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him, Jesus, who endured such opposition from single sin, sinful men that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And so as we think about standing on the shoulders of giants, we are thinking about men and women of faith who've gone before us. But of course, we're thinking about Jesus. He's gone before. Consider him who, consider, who endured such opposition, the Bible says, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So 2023, let's make it a year to get up. In what area of your life are you sitting down? It's time to get up because we've got to be a people who get up and do something. Because friends, I want you to know, nothing will happen if you do nothing. Nothing changes nothing. You can't approach something with nothing and expect change. Because nothing has no life, nothing has no substance, nothing has no blessing, nothing has no seed in it. Nothing only brings back to it what it sowed. If you sowed nothing, you reap nothing. You could only approach something with something. So I'm here to tell you it is time to do something. The Bible puts it this way in Matthew chapter 16, 19. I give you the keys of heaven and earth. Whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In other words, do something. And when you do something on earth, heaven responds in kind. Now, over the years, I've met some people who've eulogized and, and spiritualized and hypothesized saying, well, I'm waiting on God. Just like Isaiah 40, 31, those who wait on the Lord. As though waiting for the Lord is passive, like waiting for a bus. But I want you to know, friends, that waiting on God is not doing nothing, it's doing something. 
Because the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, 31, those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. And you don't renew your strength by doing nothing. You renew your strength by doing something. You go to the gym. I remember when I tore the, the ligaments in my ankle and um, or strained them, at least. I was thinking, yes, yeah, six weeks of doing nothing. And the doctor said, no, don't do nothing. You got to walk. You got to move it. You, you got you to start renewing the strength in it. The Bible says in Isaiah 40 that we renew our strength. That's going to the gym. The Bible says we'll mount up. That's climbing on wings as eagles. That's flying. We will run. That's running. We will walk. That's walking. But we won't do nothing. We have to get up and do something. 2023 is here. It's the 6th of January. We are six days in. Come on, everybody. Let's get up and do something. And remember this, God is with you in this season. May God bless you. Sophie and I love you deeply. And we're praying that this season for your life will be one of great breakthrough as you choose to do something. In Jesus' name, amen.